Howdy, all you delicious people. Godzilla versus Kong. One will fall. I guess technically that's not exactly a complete and utter false advertisement. This movie has probably got to be story-wise the worst Godzilla Kong movie story-wise that probably has ever been. With the exclusion of well, if you want to watch the really old King Kong, Godzilla's, whatever, maybe story's worse. But I would say uh, the CGI'd era of Godzilla vs. Kong, clearly this is the worst story. If anything, it kind of feels like a multiple bunch of different things all just thrusted together. Because really, they all that matters to them is to basically just get a CGI fight sequence that they had to lay filming of. Which, honestly, the fight sequences are probably the best part of this movie. But anything around that is just utter just you could watch this entire movie on mute and you would get no difference from having the sound being on because anything of anything were to s for anybody were to say anything it does not matter uh i think that this movie steals so much crap from so many movies, it's ridiculous how this movie tries to be like so many other things that had come before it. It is ridiculous. And like the whole, like we have an entire movie. Let's sum this up. We have an entire movie where one kid is just consistently crying the entire film. She is teary-eyed this entire movie. Oh, I can't. Oh, teary-eyed. And her, her... Her guy that she's working with goes to her and tells her like she's the bravest person. Crying her eyes out through the <laughs> Man, the, anyways. Still talking about this movie cryptically, but... Because uh, all that matters is the fight scenes. Nothing else is worth watching. Man, if there could be a super cut of this movie, just the fight scenes, this movie would be a lot quicker. I think there should just be that version <laughs> to where it says, Hey guys, do you just want to see just the fight scenes? Watch this movie this way. And you'll probably get the movie done in like less than an hour. Because so I think there's just a, an hour's worth of just them putzing around. To where like, there's every time where I don't exactly enjoy a movie where I have to like hit the screen to see how long before we get to certain parts. Uh, and I was like, man, <laughs> they, they tried to reincorporate people from the Godzilla films, like we've seen those. And, but they don't incorporated, they didn't incorporate a single person from the Skull Island movie. Not a single iota of John Goodman, of Tom Hiddleston, Brie Larson, because why would you? Anybody from Skull Island. I didn't see any person that I was like, oh yeah, that person was from Skull Island. No, they, like, it was basically as if, like, well, we're going to use this character, but we can't do any, like, 
So, like, this movie kind of felt obviously like a Godzilla movie without it feeling at all like it's actually Godzilla. Like, I would say that it feels like 70% of this movie was Kong. 15% of it was Gojira, Godzilla, that the guy on the, the title. And then uh, 15% of it was something that I have to mention in spoilers. Because there's something going on in the story. Story! But... <laughs> Hey, there's a story! Uh, <laughs> flimsy at best. Flimsy at best. Severely flimsy. Not original. Stealing from any movie you've ever seen in your life. The flimsiest thing that you've ever seen. Even, like, I would probably notch it down to Godzilla maybe being like 10% maybe of this movie. Uh... And 20% 20, 20 being spoiler. Um, because there's a big thing going on. It's like, whoa. Skull Island things? Whoa. <laughs> so Godzilla isn't even really in this film enough for me. Like, because like, I thought Godzilla and Kong were like sharing uh, some space together. And people could debate it. It's like, oh no, Godzilla's really in this film. Uh, not a, not enough for me. Not enough. I guess when looking at it, they're like, well, think about it, though. Like, we had, uh, we had Skull Island, and then we had, uh, two Godzilla films, I think, after this. So, Kong, this had to be kind of technically Kong's story, because they haven't done a Kong thing in such a long time. And we have to have... Like an entire Kong thing telling us where he is now kind of thing. And where he's going to eventually go in this movie. They steal a lot of stuff from other films. And that's the kind of disappointing thing about this film. Is there is a lot of copy and paste, I think, from a lot of, a lot of this kind of film. It feels like they stole from. It's like... Oh, hey, this, yeah, people really liked this movie. Oh, hey, people really like this movie. Yeah, so we're going to copy and paste this mother... Er, like, nobody's business. So, speaking of business, let's get to business and spoil this movie, because, yeah, there's not much for me to say in the very cryptic-like sense, because there's nothing going on as far as a real story goes on to... It's basically just like, yeah, let's, let's see somebody just get clocked. Uh, so, let's go into spoiler time, spoiler time, let's, about that time again, do spoil this movie. Uh, so, okay, so, there's two now in spoilers, so spoiler time, everybody, who's seen this movie, check it out on HBO Max, go ahead, it's better scenes than we've been getting in the last two Godzilla movies, not as good as Kong Skull Island. I think Kong Skull Island is way better than this movie. Story-wise, action-wise, it just feels better to me. Uh, I just... But I haven't seen that movie in a while, so maybe I'll rewatch it again and just see if it holds up. It probably does better than this movie. Because story. So... If anything... The parts that I did enjoy, uh, action scenes, because they have to be, that's the only good thing about this. So, now spoilers, so the best action scene probably was simply Kong and Godzilla fighting in the water. I think that that was really cool. Uh, you got a real, like, size of everything, and, like, it was a really interesting fight scene. Them in the water, I thought, was really cool. Um, but then also you had uh, Godzilla fighting Kong in that 
Neon City, I thought was like, ooh, this is cool. But I didn't really care about Kong or... Like, I didn't care about Godzilla or Kong fighting in this Neon City. I was kind of, like, interested in the Neon City. <laughs> I was interested in, like, yeah, hey, cool, yeah, topple this building over. It looks really cool being toppled over. I cared about every single building being toppled over. I didn't care about Kong or Godzilla fighting through any of this. But, uh, like, it was really cool visuals, them fighting in this Neon City. But... And then eventually we forcibly had to have the uh, the elephant come into the room and we had Mecha Godzilla, which I was like, okay, really? So we're going to have like, so we have to have like, we can't just straight up have a Godzilla versus Kong movie. We also have to have Mecha Godzilla which is going to basically make these two characters work together. And I was like, oh, okay, so that's how they cannot have a clear-cut winner out of all of this. And I was like, man, that's kind of like... I wanted Kong to win! I honestly wanted Kong to win, because I'm like, dude, he hasn't rightfully earned his name King Kong... If he were to have taken Godzilla down, then he would have been King Kong. And then you would go into the next movie, which I would assume would have been another Kong film, because that would have made sense to me. But now we have to go through this Pacific Rim garbage that they did in this movie? Okay, so let's back it up a little bit now, and let's kind of pull back the reins. So we end up having, in the very beginning of this film, we have King Kong treated like he's in the Hunger Games. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, what? So we have King Kong in some... Uh, virtual reality dome in Skull Island and we eventually have it to where uh, Kong just rips the trees off of this big tree and then tosses this tree trunk like a spear to hit this dome to have it crack and we end up having uh, this uh Eileen Andrews, who is this scientist that is with Kong and her daughter that cries the entire freaking movie. It's ridiculous. She's just consistently crying all the time. Just, I can't stop crying for Kong, but I can't speak to him either with the exclusion of sign language. That irked the crap out of me. So... How is it that Kong had learned sign language, one? Two, why did they have him learn sign language so that way they could basically pull off the... Well, have you guys seen the movie Planet of the Apes? Well, now you're going to see uh, Planet of the Kong, you know what I'm saying? So I guess it's, like, I guess for them, they had to eventually teach Kong sign language, and he picked it up from, I guess, this girl? Whatever. So we have it to where these scientists are saying, like, well, hey, like, I don't think Kong is going to be able to, uh, like, be contained within this dome-like thing. It's not going to happen. Like, eventually he's going to break free. It's just a matter of time. And so, uh, uh, Eileen is like, well, yeah, but we have to keep him, uh, encased in this dome or Godzilla is going to come after him. No matter where Kong is, Godzilla will find him, I guess. And so, but they're like, hey, but like, 
title of the screen. And then she's like, well, yeah, you know. <laughs> they have to fight it out eventually, you know. Yeah, they have to. So... We push on, and so we have it to where uh, to where Kong is now strapped to this like uh, ship carrier of sorts, where he basically is chained to the ship, this giant ship, and. We have it to where Elaine's daughter goes to goes to Kong and and starts doing sign language and Kong answers. And evidently Kong had somehow learned how to do sign language on his own. And none of these scientists knew about it. But this girl found that out. And so we have it to where the Eileen goes to her daughter and he's like, Oh my god, why did he why didn't Kong tell us that he learned sign language? Like we could have been communicating to him. And the little girl's like, Well no, he was afraid. And so he didn't want you guys to know. And so, here's the thing, though. This entire movie, we have to have this one girl who cries the entire movie talk to Khan because she is the only one that can talk to him. And so, we eventually have it to where her, uh, to where this uh, Nathan Lynn guy who comes into fray because he has to and starts working with Eileen because, again, he has to. He eventually comes to this girl and... Like, tells her, like, man, girl, you're really, really brave. You're crying this entire movie, but man, are you really, really brave. <laughs> so, good on her for being brave, because now we're going to have to pull off some pr Pacific Rim crap. So, we have it to where, bizarrely, uh, Nathan uh, Lynn, this uh, Alexander, uh, Alexander guy from True Blood and... Tarzans and all kinds of stuff. We have it to where Nathan is like, you know what? This movie is not weird enough to just have two behemoths just tackle one another and and attack one another. We have to have Kong go into the center of the earth and where supposedly the center of earth has no gravity and for Kong to be able to get some bizarre glow stickingly axe thing so that way he can be able to fight off Godzilla and i'm like so what now so here's what happens so we have Kong on the ship because we'll get, we'll get to this interesting fight before we get to the bizarro way of which that this ends up here. So, we end up having... Uh, we end up having uh, Kong strapped to the ship, and so we see Godzilla just kind of swimming around, just trying to make his way to Kong. And so... We end up having Kong kind of taken off guard, and Godzilla ends up t attacking Kong to where the ship accidentally completely flips over, and so Kong is fighting off Godzilla, and... And also, he Kong is trying to fight getting off these chains. So, we eventually have it to where... Uh, to where the ship decides to help Kong and release these death charges to 
uh, give Kong the advantage because otherwise Godzilla would just be annihilating this guy. And so we have it to where it kind of evens the playing field for Kong and Godzilla. And Kong ends up going and flipping the ship back over and then resting upon the ship. Uh, and eventually just Godzilla just swims away. So technically... I guess Godzilla won- wins this first round, even though nobody really did a lick of anything. Like, they kind of had to help Kong kind of live here. So, we have it to where they're like, hey man, we need to get Kong to where uh, he needs to go into the center of Earth, bizarrely. And so... We have it to where helico- a bunch of bizarre-looking helicopters, high-tech helicopters, whatever they're called, because we have some Lottie doll rich girl who's saying, like, yeah, I'm going to use all kinds of technology to help you guys out, and I hope you guys are really impressed. <laughs> she dies in the end, thank God. So she's an Atex, apex person, whoever cares. Apex predator. So... <laughs> she's a predator get her <laughs> so so we have it to where uh these helicopters all take kong into some giant net and helicopter him all the way out to antarctica because story and so we have these helicopters drop kong and so We have Kong talking to this girl, and we have it to where they're trying to figure out how to lure Kong into this portal of the center of the Earth, which is seemingly tons upon tons of miles down, where I'm like, shouldn't you have, like, kind of prepped Kong a little bit better to where he's just kind of, like, right by the hole? And just say, hey, buddy, right there, buddy. He has to kind of fall into the hole. Whatever, I guess. It's just whatever for the movie. So, man, we have so many, like, we had so many, like, underwater uh, worlds and stuff that, like, for so many movies. But, hey, no, hey, Kong, could you just go in that hole and hopefully you just find your way to just fall the right way? And everything just works out for you. (laughs) Just, I hope everything works out. So, we have it to where Irene's daughter, I don't know what her name is. I should have probably figured that out, but I, I could have not have cared about any number of these people. So, we have it to where uh Andrews we'll just call her we'll just call her daughter Andrews because that's Eileen Andrews so little Andrews ends up telling Kong hey go through this butthole go through this hole because your family might be there so Kong is like family huh so Kong goes and he just starts like uh he just starts jungle gymming him his way in through these caves and so everyone's like come on everybody let's get in our bizarre futuristic helicopter plane things and let's follow kong into this center of the earth thing and so we have it to where kong ends up falling into this hole which takes him into this portal which has him just kind of falling around bizarrely because there's zero gravity and everybody's just like, whoa, I don't know what's going on until eventually they can eventually center themselves into now having the right part of planet that they're on that works out for them. So we have it to where... Kong just starts commingling uh, with the environment that he is now in. And it seems that this environment is very hazardous. Every little step that I think Kong can make, it's like one step closer to death, seemingly. And so we have to where Kong tries as quickly as possible to maneuver from uh, 
move her around this center of the earth planet. And eventually he ends up going and is attacked by uh, what I would, I guess, call a snake with wings. <laughs> and so we end up having Kong quickly just, like, really just getting, like, his butt whooped by the snake with wings. And so we end up having uh, Nathan, Lynn, and Eileen just saying, like, yeah, just shoot at him. Just shoot at him with your weapons. And so, because we have it to where, like, some of the other hel some of the other bizarre planes that were with Kong, some of them got freaking annihilated from this, uh, from this uh, snake with wings. And so we have it to where they're like, yeah, fire at him. And so uh, they end up firing at this snake with wings thing. And that helps Kong to where Kong just uh, out muscles the thing and then just like rips off his head and then drinks the, the blood, I guess, the green blood. And the people are just like, oh, yeah, that's that's gross. So pushing on. So we eventually have Kong eventually going, as I've said, eventually, probably too many times. I apologize. We have Kong going into this uh, cavern, cave thing, Ragnar, or... Uh, end game moment, and so we have it to where Kong ends up going into this cave cavern place, and he ends up finding some uh, some weapon that looks like a axe of sorts, and he ends up finding a throne, and they're like, "Oh my God, he's home! Yeah, he's gonna be in home for like." Five whole minutes. And then... Yeah, he's gonna be home for like five whole minutes in this movie. Yeah, that's really gonna work out. But eventually, I think towards the end of the movie, that's where he actually ends up being. Uh, and that's where I think they should have shoved Godzilla in there. Just give him the boot and freaking just shove him into that hole. And he should have just been uh, in that in that center of the earth, whatever, and just fighting it out with Godzilla just every day. Just have them do that uh, with this movie, and that would have been just thumbs up. But we have it to where Kong goes and gets his ax, ax gets his throne, and so Godzilla's a little ticked. It's like, you know what? Maybe I want a throne. Maybe I just want to attack Godzilla. Or maybe... Uh, maybe I just want to attack Kong, I mean. And so, we have Godzilla, who ends up using his hair breath. Because he's in the Neon Town, and he's like, You know what? I want King Kong to fight me in the Neon Town. I'm a little ticked that he's not coming at me, bro. In the neon town. So we have it to where Godzilla goes and and blasts his way down to Kong bizarrely because this just makes sense. He just his way down to Kong and in this neon town. And so Godzilla just falls his way all the way down to Kong. And then they fight it out to have Godzilla doing his hair and <laughs> and that ends up uh, giving Kong's staff or, or axe even more power because then Kong can use this axe against Godzilla and it's like using his same power, like using his hair and... Like, Kong is using this axe with the hand power and going against Godzilla with it. So it's... Or he's, like, blocking the the blast with this axe. So we eventually push and prod and pull uh, both Godzilla and Kong 
back up to this neon town and they end up slugging it out. And so while that is going on, where the heck is uh, the Godzilla family? Where are they at? Well, we end up having uh, Madison Russell trying to meet a conspiracy theorist guy named Barney Hayes. And this Barney Hayes has made his way through this company called Apex, and he's trying to find out all the secrets. And and eventually, while he's trying to find all the secrets, he's doing it at the quite possibly worst time. And... So we have Madison Russell, who is trying to follow Bernie Hayes and find out exactly where he is. Eventually, uh, calling around any, or not calling around, physically going and traveling to any uh, general store that had a guy sell bleach to a man, because evidently Bernie Hayes only cleans himself with bleach. All right. So we go on to have uh, Madison Russell and the guy from Deadpool 2, uh, Josh Valentine. That sounds like a rushed name if I've ever heard of it in my life. So uh, we have Madison. And, and sadly enough, Josh Valentine through this whole movie is a relevant character. He's basically the tech guy, but what good does he even do in this movie? <laughs> Nothing. He was an irrelevant character, sadly enough, but everybody's irrelevant in this movie who's a person. So, we eventually have Madison and, uh, and Bernie and Josh all hooking together. And they're like, you know what? We got to figure out what's going on with this Apex company. Because there's got to be a reason that Godzilla was attacking Apex somewhere in this movie. And we got to figure out why. So, we have these people do their intel and go further along into this Apex building. Places, of course, that they should not have gone. And there are people just going... Hey, no, 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 you can't, you can't come here. And they're like, oh, well, yeah, but we want to get it really further on into this. Uh, we want to know everything. We want to know everything that's going on. And so they basically do. Uh, Madison and Bernie and Josh just sneak into this high tech, whatever company That and and here's the thing we end up having it to where also, uh, I uh, Eileen and Nathan are also seeing the apex people that they're working with trying to take control of some resources and trying to steal some things as well. And Eileen and Nathan are just like, dude, you can't take that, you can't try and control this situation. And we have a tour of the girl that is the apex girl in this. She's like, well, watch me. Yeah, good the, Good thing that's what happened to you. You're trying to control the situation and you end up getting killed. She ends up getting her ship uh, grabbed and then crushed. And then she's killed, which... Because <laughs> we have a tour of Kong values life, but only values the little girl's life. And that's all he cares about. So... So, back with uh, Madison and Bernie. So, they end up finding out that the Apex people have taken a lot of samples and taken a lot of endoskeletons of certain uh, Skull Island things and a bunch of... They took a lot of Skull Island stuff and they took a bunch of like Godzilla like things and so we end up finding out that they ended up going into the Pacific Rim like thing of this movie where 
we have a guy that is uh, digitally wired into some suit, Pacific Rim style, to be attached to this dinosaur-like skeleton. Which is to be like a Godzilla-like skeleton. And so we have it to where we end up finding out that they are to put together a Mecha Godzilla. And we have this... Uh, we eventually have them find out that, oh my god, they put this, they put this thing together. And so... We have it to where Madison, Bernie, and Josh are to meet the head of this Apex company. And he's like, yeah, like, we're putting this thing together and we're going to be the savior of the world. And we're going to even be better than Godzilla will be. Because eventually when Godzilla and Kong are fighting out in this neon town... They are trying to do a lot of research on the attack patterns of these two monsters so they can be able to figure out how powerful their Mecha Godzilla should be, and they make it even much more powerful than both uh, Godzilla and Kong combined. Or they make it better than Godzilla. So we have it to where... These Apex guys are touting about how awesome they are, and we have it to where the guy that is going to be going into the uh, the skeleton of the this Godzilla thing, and he's going to be attached to this uh, thing via his mind. He's like, yeah, I'm not quite sure exactly if this is all going to work out or not. And so the Apex guy is just like, we'll suit up and get in there. So... We end up having this Apex guy just all cocky and confident and thinking everything's going to work out. So while he's doing this uh, good old grandiose like speech, one, we ended up seeing Mechagodzilla tearing apart this Skull Island dinosaur to kind of uh, prepare us for that Mechagodzilla is just going to just tear through everything. And so it was kind of like a, a rough... It was kind of like a first draft trial. And so that's where they had like the Skull Island thing was just to kind of see like if they could uh, take down something. So uh, again, Apex guy doing his grandiose speech. And we eventually see that once they turn on the Mecha Godzilla, that it ends up basically frying the guy that's inside of it and we end up realizing that this mecha godzilla is going full on on autopilot so it kills the actual guy inside of it but it is now full on just another godzilla that now uh, has killed the head of this Apex company because he, like, the, the Mecha Godzilla took and kind of, like, armed his way and kind of grabbed the Apex guy and killed him. And then just went on his way to go and kill both King Kong and Godzilla. And so... We end up having it to where Mecha's Godzilla is just thrashing, and I mean thrashing both, like really just tearing through Godzilla, and then going, oh, hey, Kong, you're here too? And so he just starts beating the living crap out of Kong, and so it seems that both Godzilla and Kong are almost going to die, and... So we have Madison, Josh, and Bernie scrambling to figure out how to turn this Mecha Godzilla off because he he is working via a satellite. So they're trying to figure out how to turn this whole thing off. And 
I think it's the dumbest way of how they actually figure out how to just turn this thing off. Common sense. But anyways, like they could have called the power company and just been like, hey man, could you just shut everything off? Wouldn't that be great? So, they're trying to figure out a passcode or a secret code to turn this Mecha Godzilla off. We have Madison who is calling her father for her father to track down what is all going on. To have him have some tie into this movie that doesn't quite exactly make sense to me. But eventually, uh, Madison's father ends up figuring out where she is and they kind of connect with one another and so on and so forth. So, we, we have to where Kong seemingly is almost going to die. And so, they need to basically uh, defibrillate Kong. They need to, like, electrocute Kong. And so, they're like, well, how are we going to be able to do that? We need to give him so much electricity. It's ridiculous. It would, it would be to uh, power up an entire city for a week. And so, what Nathan ends up doing is he ends up going on to his ship and going on to the chest of Kong and I guess he tries to put on like a massive like EMP kind of a thing and on onto his ship and then he just tries to run like crazy to try to get away from this uh EMP burst and so he ends up getting knocked over and this thing electrifies Kong and like helps him to get back into the fight. So we have the girl again crying for the whole entire movie is telling, uh, hey, Kong, hey, over here, the smallest girl in this entire movie. You can't see me, but you always do. <laughs> so she ends up telling him via sign language that, hey, Godzilla is not your enemy. The uh, robot Godzilla is. Well, she says, like, that is the other thing the, the machine is. And so Kong is just like, mm, I, I don't want to I don't, I don't want to fight the Godzilla guy. I don't want to fight the machine thing. Eh, come on, girl. So, Kong is like, well, I guess I'll fight the Kong. I'll fight the mech thing. So, we have it to where, like, I think the the Kong versus Godzilla fight in the Neon, that was the best scene. That was best. We had it to where there was, like, a fling of uh, Kong's battle axe, and that goes in, like, to one of the, uh, to one of the buildings, and that was cool. Just, like, a little, like, a little thing, and we had it to where at some point where Kong was, like, uh, climbing into this building just to have it topple over. I thought it was just awesome. And everybody was, like, evacuated, and it was, it was great. So we have it to where now Godzilla and Kong are teaming up on the Mecha Godzilla, and sure far enough, we have it to where them working together to fight this uh, Mecha Godzilla. What do you think is going to happen? Come on. You're gonna tear this bad boy apart. They're gonna they're gonna end up just beating the crap out of this Mecha Godzilla. But here's the thing, though. In all true and honesty, the humans still have to be the victors out of all of this. And so we have it to where the Josh Valentine's guy, who hasn't done a lick of anything in a bulk of this movie, realizes. Hey, you know what we could do? Instead of figuring out this password, this passcode to this Mecha Godzilla, how about we just pour liquid all over the computer? Just like just try to destroy the computer and then it'll shut off the Mecha Godzilla. Isn't that a smart idea? Shouldn't we just pour water all over this bad boy, this computer and just be and call it a day? That's exactly what they do. So 
like uh, Josh grabs a like a flask or whatever from Bernie, and then just pours alcohol all over the computer, and then the computer shuts down, and then Mechagodzilla shuts down, and then it's like, oh well, I guess the uh, the humans won. The humans beat their own stupid device. That caused all this ruckus because I guess it wasn't really and truly Godzilla or Kong that was causing all the problems. It was actually just Mecha Godzilla that caused all this problem. Brilliant, honestly. We wouldn't have needed Kong to fight Godzilla if Godzilla wasn't going after Apex and going after Mecha Godzilla. Because bizarrely, Godzilla could sense the mech Godzilla. He could find he was trying to find it. He was trying to fight it. And if there if that mecha Godzilla just wouldn't have existed, all would have been right with the world. But anyways, so we have it to where Godzilla is like, you know what? I'm gonna live to swim another day. And so Godzilla just swims off, and Kong is just like, well, hey, like, I guess technically I won, right? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm the only thing that really has, like, a, like an end credits, end credits dealio in this movie. And so, like, I'm the only one that has a real thing going on within this movie besides, like, Godzilla just, meh, yeah. So... Here's the thing that we should have done. We should have just, like, slapped a couple of uh, double-A batteries onto Mechagodzilla and just, like, round three. <laughs> it's like, that's what it should have been. It should have been that they should have restarted Mechagodzilla, but it should have worked perfectly the, the next time around. And that would have solved all their problems. If they could have made a big, gigantic boat-looking thing from the Sea of Monsters movie... They could make a perfectly good working Mecha Godzilla, but instead they effed it up. But so we just have Kong going back into the center of the earth thing, and he is just like home there. And that's how the movie just kind of just fizzles out and ends. I'm like, wait a minute, couldn't they have just done that all along again still you couldn't have had Godzilla go and just be just booted into that hole and again had Godzilla had either Godzilla or Kong just booted into this hole and everything would have been fine in the world because really, Godzilla was causing a lot of problems. Like, this guy was like, you know what, I gotta go after everything. And Kong was like, you know what, I just want to exist. And Mecha Godzilla was just like, well, robot, beep boop, beep boop, beep boop. So, <laughs> that's all I gotta say about this movie. It, there's not much to say besides the, the silly or stupid things. That kind of went into this movie, but when looking at it, it's just the fight scenes, and that's all that matters. And uh, really, uh, I could say it's the fight scenes are good, uh, but I never want to go into this movie with any higher expectation of, well, I hope the CGI is really good, because <laughs> it's not then I am just Audi 5000. But at least we got a cleaner looking CGI'd movie, and that's all that I could say about this movie, at least. Is, like, so I was just expecting another, like, oh my god, this is going to look awful, but it didn't. Uh, visually, it looked good looking, but, so I guess that could be the, the positive. And the, the negative is just, Man, the humans that are in this movie, man, they're like, man, this is going to be a fat check. This is going to be great. <laughs> I'm going to love this fat check because what the heck are we even talking about? 
A lot of these lines seem like the most difficult things to deliver because none of it really makes sense. I was so baffled and confused by whatever the heck anybody was saying in this movie. So, I think it's time to just say one thing and goodbye everybody. Goodbye everybody.